Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Diesel. For our, for our, can I even speak? For See, I've got to edit that. Uh, for all our regular viewers, um, you might be a bit surprised to see this, but this is just going to be a really quick one. Well, hopefully, on how to change your lawnmower blades and a few basic checks. Yep, we've got a lot of experience on lawnmowers from back when I was a teenager. That's where it all started. Um, at school, I rebuilt one of these Briggs & Stratton motors, cut it down, sectionized it, painted it, colored it up, because that was one of the projects. And um, yeah, I had a bit of a little lawnmower business as well, so we'll call it little for this video. And uh, so a fair bit of experience on these as well. So this one's gonna be uh, changing the blades. I hope you like it. Just a handy one for the DIYs. A lot of you, I suppose, you know, you're servicing your own Pratos. You probably already got this part figured out, but you know what? Um, let's just run through changing the blades and the safest way to do that because a few aspects to take care of. So first thing you can obviously see as we've done already, we've taken the catcher off and put it up on the dirty old bench. The easiest way is to get it up on a bench and then I'm gonna put the handle under the vise like that so hopefully it stays like that. I'm not too worried about damaging the vise. I'll reposition the camera so you can see what we're doing. All right guys, so this is where you're gonna pull out your old Imperial socket set. Now we're going from memory, it's been a while since I've even done stuff like this. You can see these blades, I'll, I'll explain what happens with the blades. It's not about them getting blunt, it's the, the thrower on the back. So the way new blades are, this is the part that throws the grass into the catcher. So rocks and stuff hit that and break that off. These are quite bad and um, haven't been changed for a long time. So look, from memory, uh, 7 16 and maybe 5 eighths or something like that. We'll just give it a go. I've got the impact driver here, uh, 7 16 so whether it's a round, what do you call it, rotor or whatever, or this flat one should be the same. What's going on there? See if we can get that sock on a bit dirty, that's all. So better make sure I'm undoing it. Yep. Oh yeah, it's coming out, but it doesn't want it. So this is the thing you get with lawnmowers. So it is a bit risky. So look, you can if you like, if you don't want to do this, just try and get the nuts and bolts behind there. I'm going to have a crack at this, just to show you the easiest way. Um, usually this isn't the hard part. There's a big block on the end there that this bolts to. That actually has to come off to get the crankshaft through the engine that way if you were doing a rebuild. But so yeah, obviously it would have been a good idea to give it a spray. So we're just doing that now. A bit of lube in the one that's even cracked loose is the go. Might even let that soak for a bit and we'll try another one. As soon as it's moved, we'll just give it a bit of a spray. But... Yeah, I think it's gonna come out, but you know, we'll just work to the next one. No hurry, you know what I mean? I'm trying to be a hurry. Again, I'll try and do things in the video a bit quicker to keep it short for you. Right, it's coming out, it's all good. Now don't, I hope you're still watching because if you're going to do this, one of the most important things you're going to do, who can tell me, it is disconnect the spark plug, which we've already done, I didn't show you that, I'm sure you know where it is, that's up the top here, I don't know if you can see it in the video, let me go and see what that camera is, what you got in the picture there, no you can't see, so the spark plug, yeah on the front of the engine, disconnect the lead and make sure it's away from the spark plug. So then you can obviously turn this, and it's not going to fire, and chop your fingers off. Um, probably not going to happen anyway, but safety first. Um, the other quick one was, which way do you tip this engine? The best way is to tip it backwards as we have now, that's why I've done it that way. Um, you can tip it, look, I think they say the exhaust side is the way to tip it, but I can tell you now, if you tip it far enough, um, you will get oil coming out in the exhaust. And to change the oil, there's a bolt under here to drain as well. It's a, you just use your three out drive hex, like EG, you know, this one, I could just zip it and do it right now to drain the oil, or the other way you can do it is from the filler at the top and you just tip it sideways. So not just changing blades. I'll give these a bit more of a spray. These ones seem a bit tighter than the others. While we're playing with that, I'll check my memory. Like I said, it's been a long time. Five eighths for the middle one? No, no, I was wrong. It must be nine sixteenths, but definitely imperial sizes, yep. So while we're letting those have a soak. That's not going anywhere. So what we'll do, I'll go and grab the big gun. That 
big gun. And we'll throw that socket and adapter on. Okay, we've got the big gun here. The big guns, the big guns are out, okay. That socket. It's a single hex socket, which is good. Now this is just on one, speed one, which is torque lower as well. Let's see what happens on undo. Okay, let's give it a number two, see what happens. She don't want to come undone at the moment. So we're going to hit number three, and if it doesn't happen, we're going to put these other bolts back in and just do it the hard way. Alright, so that's why I suppose it's a bit like a, some of you guys will understand with the dirt bike and things. Things that get muddy, dirty, boats, corrosion, dirt, mud, rust, lawnmowers, shocking, right? That doesn't want to come undone, so cancel that idea because it's not worth it, you know, it could bust off. It's just going to cause, you know, and the cost of lawnmowers these days, I don't know, what is it, 300 bucks for a lawnmower? Alright, so I'm going to... Zip those all back in. Sorry to waste your time. But I hope you found it entertaining and educational anyway. Of course you've got to torque those up for 40 Newton meters. No, no, I'm just, I'm just guessing 40. And I think this gun does about 40. And we know they're not going, they're not coming loose. And uh, happy days, right? So, now yeah, we're going to do it the hard way, guys. Now, I'm not going to keep you. I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to get in behind here with a, um, I reckon that's probably, you know, one of those imperial sizes as well. 9 sixteenths or 5 eighths or something. Undo the bolt. Take the bolt out. I'll do that and I'll come back to you once that's done. Because I know I've wasted a bit of your time already, but I hope you learnt something. Right, so you know when jobs that seem simple aren't always that simple? <laughs> you know, this is one of those weekend jobs where... Anyway, it's all good. I'll, I'll run through what's happened. So you saw where we were. I'll explain most of what we're going to do. We wanted to take this off to get to the bolts behind there. They were playing hard case, so... Um, I you know, said, we'll just take the bolts off because this didn't want to come undone. Now, I did say... 9 16 and we're using a single hex 9 16 on there which fits fine and that's what the size is and uh, I'll assure you of that and the 7 16 here 11 you know 11 mils a bit smaller than 7 16 so that may fit but that worked anyway but what I thought was because I had the gun on here remember and it wouldn't come undone but I went you know let me grab the 14 because that's just a little bit smaller than 9 16 and um, guess what happened well Watch and see, because I couldn't, I, I didn't tell you the full story. I tried to get these bolts undone. They were really tight. I did crack them loose, but they're just spinning, right? They're just spinning, these nuts behind here, they're just spinning, and they're not coming off. So spinning and not coming off doesn't really work for us. So, we're gonna go back to plan A. All right. Well, we think we are. Bit more spray. Go to one of the other ones. I said in the earlier video, spark plug lead disconnected. We had one of these out, so that's going to come out easy. Look, I've had always their issues getting out there. I've never actually had one. Break off. Gun's having a hard time, isn't it? It's only about a 40 newton meter thing, so it's coming off. Okay, we'll get we'll get the big boys onto this one as well, alright? Okay. So we're gonna need to take that socket off. We need the adapter. Onto the, onto the big gun. We're gonna turn the big gun down to one. Speed it says, but it's not just speed. Like I said it's torque as well, so let's get the big gun onto that and see if we snap it off or not. Slowly coming out, but we'll go two. Ooh, it's not happy, is it? Anyway. I'm 
just controlling it to go slowly. A bit of lube and also... Also to cool it down, see it's cooking. Alright, so, but they'll be fine. Hopefully. Just give it a rest, you know, it's not a rush. There's more chance it's going to come off if you give it a rest, give it some lube, let it... Stop moving at the moment, so I'm going to three. Oh, broke it off, see? There you go, that's what was going to happen. Anyway, it's all good. Because we can, we've got a few options with that. We can either drill it, tap it and whatever, or we can just use two bolts. Because <laughs> two is better than none. Um, this center bolts, it's not going anywhere anyway. So I'll get that one off now that we know we had to bugger that up. So we just have to show you that, you know, these things happen. And of course it's not worth fixing by the time you get, this is the main bolt that holds it all on anyway. So you could replace this. These are a pain. From memory, it's just an interference fit, so you just need a puller. You can grab this and push there, but um, yeah, they do come off. I think that's, yeah, believe it or not, yeah, there's a keyway in there. And it's just, that's right, because this bolt is what holds it on. That's, what, that's, that's what's going on there, right? So we've got that one there which helps locate, but it's not holding it on. I'll be pretty confident with that, with three bolts anyway, instead of four, but we'll work out what we're going to do. This point was changing the blade, so there's the bottom of the, so, so they're spinning. For whatever reason they're spinning, probably because they've been on there 10 years, right? So you can see that's turning, right? But it's not coming off and the whole bolt's not spinning. They've got little locators, I'll show you the new ones, right? They've got a little flat spot on there. And I've already checked that they're not spinning in the rotor. So we're gonna go to the bench and use the grinder and whatever and get the old blades off with the new ones on. That's where it's at at the moment. Hope it's been educational for you. Glad I don't work on lawnmowers. Can you imagine trying to charge someone enough money to do these jobs and a service and oil and everything? Whole new mower's 300 bucks. It's kind of used and throw away now, a bit of a waste, but anyway. So what I'm gonna do is, firstly, is have the 14 mil on this gun set up. All right. See, nothing's happening, it's not coming off. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna spin that and apply some of the pressure. So try and get a flat blade screwdriver in behind there. We'll go and grab that. I'll grab a hammer as well because you know, the threat of a hammer could come in handy. I'll just put the little hammer just there. So it's ready, so everybody knows what's going on. Okay, so we want to get in behind the blade, I reckon. Let's use the hammer. All right. Right, so we're applying a little bit of pressure, and then with this, now let me see what's going on. Is it moving a little bit? I think it is. Definitely. So it's like we're using the screw of like a wedge, right? It's came a little bit more. So basically, either when they've done it up, they've threaded, or because there's a slot cut in there, you know. It's just, yeah, you know, these things are probably best done more regularly before it gets this bad. Bit of persistence and persuasion, and it's going to get there. Right. This is not what you do when you change your injectors. Okay. okay all right, so. Pretty close, I reckon, because... It is so close to falling off. I 
like I said, comes with all new blades, nuts and bolts. I'm not worried about butchering anything. This is about as rough as it gets. You hope anyway, don't you? Right. You can see it's, it's happening. It's a happening thing. Bit of a tap to apply some pressure and there. This is why we have this is why we have dodgy old benches. Okay, so we've got our nice clean benches over there. This is the dodgy rough old hammer it wreck it bench workshop over here. And as you can see, that'll come off now. We've so you've got that see the flat spot there to locate the new blade. So look, we're gonna do basically the same with the other one. I'll save you the heartache and I'll show you fitting the new ones. I just wanted to point out, number one safety thing, like I said, disconnect the spark plug. And not only disconnect it, make sure this is tucked over here, not touching, because it can still fight if it's just making a contact. Now the other important two, safety announcements, that's one. The other one is, when this came apart, it had a thick washer on it, right, at this side. So you've got a wave washer that goes in between to allow the blades to, you know, at the moment, you know, pretty tight because of the situation I'm trying to explain now. And that is, see, this is a nylock for safety. It needs to be, not come off. See, it's right near the end of the bolt. It's barely, it's about to turn on. I'm not happy with that. So what I'm doing is re-engineering. I'm getting rid of the washer, okay, so that we can get a bit more. See the nylock, it's a good two, probably a mil or two up from the end of the bolt. It's not going to come loose. And then it allows us to leave it a little bit so we get that movement. Because the blade, need, when they hit a rock, they need to be able to flick around there. So be aware of that. They don't need to be fixed like that. You leave them like that, generally like that. But when they hit something, they're going to flick around either way, right? So they'll work their way, I suppose, a little bit. They don't need to be loose. You just nip them up so they're sort of just nicely like that, right? No washer for me because I want to make sure safety that that's sitting at the right point on the nylock there, right? I'll show you again this one. Dodgy ass. Right. Disconnect that spark plug. Okay, so fun and games. Fun and games. We're getting there. Now... What would be a wise idea is to get your, this is exactly what these products are for. What we use in this situation is the Penrite Copperese. Now we're not necessarily promoting any brand, but see so this gear here, and we're gonna just put a little bit of that on all the threads of the bolts, like so. Right. Oops, gonna try and hurry up not take too long for you. Just putting that on all the bolts. They're all looking all right, except for the one that snapped off. We've done our engineering calculations and three bolts are fine. Look, the main bolt in the middle is the main one. If that snapped, you're in trouble because basically that's what holds it onto the center shaft and the three on the outside. You could actually, if that middle bolt came out, then that whole, this, we'll call it a block, could slide off. It's just a key way locating it and um, oh, yeah, so that's all done. We'll get the copperese out of the way. So here's the new, we've got the new blades on there. Did I put them the right way yet? Hopefully. Um, did I or not actually? It's got me thinking which way the, um, yeah, that's right, I was holding, holding that the wrong way, right? So you can see the nuts without the washer, nice and uh, happy days. So they're gonna face up like that and that's bent up. So it's gonna spin and throw the grass into the catcher the way it's meant to. So all we gotta do is there's obviously a torque specification for these. I don't remember what it is. I really got, it's been a long time, no idea. So this broken off bolt, you could probably muck around with it and get it out and whatever, but my calculations are it's not worth my time. It's gonna work like a bit of a locator anyway, if you know what I mean, because it's you know about a mil or two proud, if you know what I mean, so that'd be that one there, but. Look, we're just going to um, zip them in just to make things happen a bit quicker. There's my sockets. Come on. Just the 40 newton meter gun. Don't worry, we're going to do it tighter than that. That's just the initial. When you put things together, you don't have to do one tight while the others aren't even in. You just do get them all, get them all happening. You know. 
That one's the happiest one. This one's not good. Like before, don't do what I did. Take a bit more time with it. And um, you're less chance you're gonna break it, so. I was trying to get it done quicker for the video. I should have just given it a rest anyway, but. That's 40 Newton meters. We're gonna give it a little bit more than that. But anyway, for essentially for the video, that uh, spark club plug still disconnected. So once you fit your blades, make sure before you fit them that well, they will move when they hit a rock. They're just they're nice and firm. You don't need to leave them loose. Um, make sure your blades do look the same. Right, so we get the old ones here. They kind of look the same, but you know they're chopped. These are going to work a lot better. This will be the last blade change this mower ever gets. Probably it's been the first as well. Um, they are awesome engines, these Briggs and Strattons. While we're at it, I'll go through a couple other little details. Um, but Look, so make sure they're nice and nipped. If this happens, I think you'll be right, but it's up to you if you want to muck around and try and... Look, they're stainless bolts, they're rock hard, and trying to drill and tap that out was going to be a nightmare. So, you could do it, but, mate, it's not worth my time. I'm very confident these bolts are going to do the job, and like I said, we've got that as a bit of a locator there. How you going, Jazz the dog? How you going? Um, so, what we'll do, I'll just pop it down so you can... So I'm going to tighten those up a bit more, but I just want to go through a couple other things with these Briggs and Stratton engines that may help you if you've got one or if you have any issues with it. So obviously, simple stuff. To clean the air filter, you undo this screw, flat blade screw rubber, that comes off, there's a bit of foam in there. Best way to wash it, you know, in some sort of like Kero, or you can use petrol if you want, stinking stuff. Put gloves on or whatever, you know, it does clean well. That's what we used to always do back in the day, wash it in petrol. You can actually wash it in soap and detergents and that doesn't work as well. Anyway, get all the fuel out, soak it in oil, any oil, I don't really care. Wring out the excess oil, just so it's oiled, not soaked in oil. Wring it out really nice, tight. get every excess bit of oil you can out of it. That works really well. The holes are at the bottom, that's where the air goes in. So all the dirt and dust and everything is going to stick to these in these holes here and really block it up. It's going to make the engine hard to start, it's going to run rich, it's going to be able to get fuel but not air. So if you're in dusty conditions, you really need to do that a lot. With these engines, they call it easy start. It's never that easy. Reliable starting, well, you know, it'll start eventually. With these, you meant to one, two, three times. Anyway, change your spark plug, piece of cake. Don't over tighten it. Just take it out. It's, I think it's a CJ8. I don't know. These, these ones might be different, actually. I don't know what brand it is. That's a champion, a CJ8. I don't actually like champions. I think this might be an NGK, which I prefer. BR2 something or other, dash L something. Anyway, you can figure that out. What can I tell you about these? Changing the oil, we touched base on that before. Three out drive, just like your, your ratchet or like a um, breaker bar type, you know, your bar to take that plug out. And it's around the other side to refill the engines around here. Again, you don't need to over tighten that, it's just got an O-ring on it. And that's to check the level as well. From memory, they take about 600 mil of oil. And you know what, I don't really care what oil. It's just a mower engine. You can chuck in your Penrite diesel 10, 1040, whatever, no problem, okay? Any oil will be fine. Change it every now and then's the key thing. Check the level. They do burn a bit of oil as they get older. Awesome, tough engines and they just keep going and going. If they don't start, often what happens, there's a gasket in the carby, whatever, that stretches and things don't work too, too well. Um, and the other thing is fuel, bad old fuel, fuel contamination. So to take the tank off, it's not too hard. You know, take your cable off here, take that off there, unhook that out of there. You've got to undo, I think, one, two, three bolt. Oh, no, you don't, you don't need to take those off. You can if you like, but it's just that bolt there, and there's another one in here, right? And this whole fuel tank, there's a few springs and that. Take a photo, take note of where it is, but the whole tank will come off quite easily. Give it a good clean up, empty it out, wash it out, happy days, new fuel. And if you want, the carby just bolts on top of the tank. You can just unscrew that. That's, you'll see the gasket I'm talking about, you may want to replace that, might not be worth it, but usually a good clean up and some fresh fuel is enough to get these things going. A good clean up in the fuel tank, the carby, clean filter, new spark plug, clean oil, mate, and the thing will go for another five years. But I suggest you don't leave it that long. Guys, a bit of a long video, it was meant to be short at the start, but again, I hope you found it informative. No, it's not a diesel, it's a petrol, it's a lawnmower. But again, hopefully all good information, you've enjoyed it. If you have, give us the thumbs up. And if you haven't already, you know, subscribe. We're talking all sorts of things related around motor vehicles, engines, whatever. We might even get onto bikes and who knows what else, jet skis, boats and whatever, because we've got a bit of experience with all these things. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See ya.